There are symptoms with Chiari malformation that are more typical of the syndrome. For example, a headache that begins in the back of the head and radiates forward, most often associated with coughing or sneezing or lifting a heavy object. That's the most typical symptom of a Chiari malformation. There are other symptoms that can also uh, present, for example, numbness and tingling of the hands and shoulders, trouble swallowing, ringing in the ears, and a variety of different symptoms. Anatomically, the problem with a Chiari malformation occurs at the level of the foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is the opening at the base of uh, the skull, and what happens in that Chiari malformation is there isn't enough room for the cerebellum in the posterior fossa, and part of the cerebellum, particularly what's called the cerebellar tonsils, herniates through the foramen magnum itself. And at this point, there isn't enough room both for the tonsils as well as for the spinal cord uh, protruding through the foramen magnum. This causes increased uh, pressure and pressure buildup of the cerebral spinal fluid, and that's exactly what causes the headaches, and particularly when patients uh, cough and uh, sneeze, there's a pressure buildup and the patient uh, gets headaches, which often occur in the back of the head and radiate uh, forward, but that does not have to happen uh, all the time. One of the other complications of a Chiari malformation is that some patients can form what's called a syrinx, which is a cyst or a cavity within the spinal cord itself, and that causes different kinds of uh, symptoms, including numbness and weakness as well. The problem with the syrinx is that sometimes, once they form, then don't go away, so that's why it's good to address them. The most critical part of managing a patient with Chiari malformation is having the accurate diagnosis. Once the diagnosis is made and one is confident of the diagnosis, the treatment is surgical. The problem with a Chiari malformation is that there isn't enough room in the posterior fossa for the cerebellum. It's a mechanical problem, requires a mechanical solution. So the operation itself is we make an incision in the back of the head. It's approximately a 10 centimeter incision. We, we expose all the bones in the posterior fossa in the back of the head. We remove uh, the bones, the sub, what's called the suboccipital bone. We remove the lamina of the first vertebra, the C1 lamina. After the bony work has been uh, completed, we proceed to open the, the dura, which is the coverings uh, of uh, the brain, and then I bring in a microscope. Some patients uh, with Chiari malformation have a significant amount of scarring, which needs to be taken down and that's done uh, microsurgically with a microscope. We place a patch uh, over that on the dura to provide more space for the posterior fossa and the muscle layers in the skin are then closed. What's most critical in evaluating a patient with headaches and a number of other neurologic symptoms is to determine if the patient's symptoms are related to the Chiari malformation observed on an MRI, for example. Here at UPMC, our team has seen many, many patients with these kinds of symptoms, and we're able to make the determination if the symptoms are or are not related to the Chiari malformation, and therefore the patients that are treated have the best chances of getting better from the procedure.